Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name is Michael Evangelista and I will be your moderator for today. Just few reminders that you are in listen-only mode to avoid unnecessary background noise. However, you can type in your questions anytime you want and those questions will be answered by our panelists in a Q&A segment. The recording and certificate of this webinar will be sent out in two days' time and our topic for today is about battery capacity measurements made comparable with new temperature compensation facility and it will be presented by our expert. Actually, this is a pre-recorded webinar, so without any further ado, let's start the webinar, Jay. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining uh, in today's webinar on battery capacity measurements made comparable with new temperature compensation. Uh, thank you for joining in today's webinar and also uh, this, as you know, as the topic is mentioned with new temperature compensation, that means the, the, the means uh, the, the originally which we have the capacity, battery capacity testers are now available with new some updation or upgradations for the temperature compensations. As we all know, batteries are an essential part in our day-to-day uh, -day life in all the sectors. As you all are aware, in uh, some few days before, Mumbai has had gone in a power cut of a long hours for about six to seven hours. And there were many incidents which had disturbed the human life. For example, like in hospitals, the people uh, who were on a critical systems equipments were affected due to the uh, power cut. In that situation, batteries are an essential part which are basically installed in all the critical organizations like hospitals, substations, etc. The job of the battery is to give and substitute to the power when there is a power cut happening in the area. But many a times in metro cities like Mumbai, we do not uh, come across power cuts normally. And so these batteries are not used or in working worked frequently. They are, they are being uh, installed for use when there is a uh, requirement or there is a need. So many a times what happens is that we do not uh, use the batteries and batteries are already installed and we do not care about the battery's capacity or is the battery healthier enough to do its job when the need arises. So battery capacity testing is an uh, essential requirement so that the purpose of installing a, such a huge battery systems, which are financially more for the organization, uh, their economic, economically we have been installed the battery for a purpose. And if that purpose is not fulfilled, then installing the battery system is of no use to that organization. So to test whether the purpose is fulfilled, for installing the battery, we need to carry out some battery capacity measurements. We need to do the health checkup of the battery periodically or uh, periodically on a, or on a regular base as per the standards specified. And as you see with the new temperature compensation, basically the uh, capacity of the battery changes as per the temperature. So earlier we do not have a temperature compensation facility in any of the equipments available. But MEGA, as you know, upgrades and updates frequently with uh, new technologies and advancements in the worldwide market, has come up with a new facility for temperature corrections as per the IEEE and IEC standards. Today's agenda for uh, the presentation webinar is We will be studying about uh, batteries and its uses, where all we use batteries, what are the types of batteries, and what are the types of battery testing, and our mega solution, that is battery capacitor tester by mega, which is Torkel, and the new uh, releases, what are the new updates available for Torkel. Uh, uses of battery. Batteries, as I, as I explained,
just a minute. I think my laptop has got system has got stuck. Just yeah, Matthew. Now your uh, screen is visible. It's on first slide. Yes, we can. Okay. Yes. Use of batteries. Uh, where all the batteries are used? Uh, basically, batteries are used to ensure that critical electrical equipments are always on. These uh, may be the applications are uh, these are used in electrical generating substations for the protection and control of switches and relays. As you know, in the substations we have control rooms where uh, relays and panels are installed. And when there is a uh, major power cut, the supply to these uh, relays and panels have been as, uh, given by the batteries installed in the substation. So we have battery rooms in all the substations. And uh, these play an important role uh, so that the relays are and the, pan the relays installed in the panels are not uh, affected and they work uh, even if there is a uh, power cut, major power cut. So at that the, when there is a need for that relays to operate, whether to trip or not, these the power power supply is needed and it is given by these batteries installed in the substations. So it is very necessary and important that the batteries are should be in very healthy condition so that when there is a major uh, power cut or major issue, it should supply the needed power to the relays installed in the substation so that the protection uh, system works smoothly. In telephone systems. Also, uh, the batteries are installed for the data centers and all. Even when there is a power cut, these batteries are uh, installed there so that the data centers are given enough power without interruption so that uh, the telephone systems work uh, smoothly. In industrial applications for protection and control, in organized large organizations uh, for the uh, backup for computers and where financial uh, data are saved like in banks, this batteries plays an important role, and in all less critical business information systems, uh, batteries are installed. Without battery backup, hospitals would have to close their doors until power is restored. So, as we talk, there are patients. Uh, there may be patients on life uh, support systems that require absolute 100% of power at all times. So, uh, these patients are on are uh, basically on on the uh, system, critical systems, where failure is not an option. So the power should be uh, very well supplied at all times to the, uh, to the uh, patients. So batteries play an important role in our day-to-day -day life, whether it may be substations or telephone systems or industries or, or hospitals. Our reasons for battery testing. There are three main reasons for battery testing. One is to ensure the supported Supported equipment is adequately backed up. That means uh, the uninterrupted power supply is given to the uh, critical systems so that they work or operate without interruption continuously. Second reason to prevent unexpected failures by tracking the battery's health. The power, uh, the fluctuations in the power or the cutting of power can cause uh, failure to the equipment. So an uninterrupted or uh, continuous power supply should be given to the critical systems and uh, so that uh, an unexpected failure can be avoided. Thirdly, to forewarn or predict the death, or we can say that if, if there is a need to replace a battery, a battery testing is an essential testing we need to do. What are the basic questions asked by the battery users? One is what is the capacity and the condition of the battery now? We all know that uh, when you purchase a battery, there is an AH rating, uh, AH rating given on the given on the battery. AH is nothing but ampere hour. It it is nothing but it the rating or the capability or capacity of the battery to give that much current for a particular time. For example, you have a hundred AH battery. It means that it can give. 10 ampere current output current for 10 hours. So the capacity is determined uh, by how much current it can give for that specified uh, time period. 
Secondly, the question asked by the battery users are is when will it uh, need to be replaced? That means uh, the regular uh, capacity testing uh, leads us to know that whether the battery is capable to give that much output current for the specified time period. If it is not, we need to take an action according to the thresholds given by standards, how much capacity or how much output current it can give as per uh, with according to the corresponding time. Third, what can be done to improve or not reduce its life? What are the precautionary measures by which can be done so that the battery life is increased? You know that uh, in battery rooms, uh, many a times we see that there are ventilation, air conditions given so that the temperature is maintained at a particular level so that the battery life can be increased. Next, coming to uh, types of batteries. Majorly, there are two types of battery, as you see, lead acid battery and nickel cadmium battery. The lead uh, acid batteries are uh, again divided into different parts, as you see uh, in the slide like flooded battery, VRLA battery, that is valve regulator lead acid battery, flat plate and tubular plate. And nickel cadmium is divided into four types, flooded, sealed, pocket, pocket plate and flat plate. Lead acid batteries, basically, there is in the lead acid, ba uh, bat acid battery, there is a chemical reaction in the sulfuric uh, acid electrolyte where the basically the reaction results and upon discharge, there uh, upon discharge and regeneration, the acid is depleted, and hydrogen and oxygen are formed during the discharge and float charging. So, in flood flooded batteries, these ox hydrogen and oxygen which are formed, they escape, and so water needed to be uh, filled periodically to the battery. And so, as the name suggests, flood lead acid. It means water needed to be added to the batteries for the reaction to uh, continuously take place. In the valve regulated lead acid battery, that is VRLA battery, the hydrogen and oxygen gases which are uh, generated recombine again to form water. And so, in this, we do not add water for the again processing or reactions to right? so occur. Additionally, in the VRLA batteries, as you see, there are, uh, uh, there are two types, that is AGM-based, absorbed glass mat waste, and gel. In this, the acid is immobilized by using this, uh, any of these two uh, materials, that is absorbed glass mat or a gel. And in the nickel-cadmium uh, batteries, it is similar to the lead acid battery, but there are two dissimilar metals used in, the, in an electrolyte. And the construction of uh, this nickel cadmium is similar to the lead acid battery. And these uh, nickel cadmium uh, seal, nickel cadmium batteries are not that much seen. They are rarely seen. What are the components of a battery? Uh, well, basically, what structures are or components are used to build a battery? One is jar, and second is uh, electrolyte. A jar means a jar basically is used to hold everything, the all the electrolytes and the acid or uh, components. Jar is used to hold as a cover, an electrolyte, and maybe a sulfuric acid or potassium hydroxide solution. Third is plates, as you know, there is negative and positive plates. And top connections, which are welder, where all like polarity plates are welded together. And then posts, which are used to connect these top connections of the like polarity plates. Basically, the internally there are uh, various uh, plates of different uh, two polarities, that is negative and positive. And these plates are uh, connected together or welded. Uh, on the post, and these posts are uh, connected again to the top position. <coughs> this is a construction uh, of a cell. You see there are different uh, uh, plates, negative and positive plates. As you see uh, in, in the image, there the negative plate is 
the number of negative plate is one more than the positive plate. All the batteries available have one more negative plate than the positive plate. This is because the positive plate is a working plate and if there isn't a negative plate on the outside of the last positive plate, the whole outsider positive plate will not be used for any reaction or create any electricity. And for that efficiency, we, there is, in all the batteries, you will see a one more number of negative plate as compared to the positive plate. As you see in the image, uh, the plate negative plates, which are gray colored, is numbered from 1 to 15. And you see uh, the positive plates are in between them. For example, if you have a 100 A33 battery, it is uh, comprised of 33 plates. And, and in that, it will be 33 means it, you will have 16 positive plates and 17 negative plates. And each plate, for example, is uh, rated 100 AH. We can uh, multiply this, uh, multiply the 16, that is the positive number of positive plates, 16 by 100. And we will get a capacity of that battery as 1600 AH. Here the plates are uh, joined together on the post. You see this is negative post one, this is positive post one. So the, the same polarity plates are connected together to a post and the uh, posts are connected with intercell connectors. What are the failure uh, modes in batteries? We will see uh, uh, one by one for different batteries, what are the failure modes. Firstly, for the lead acid flooded one, as we have seen in the lead acid uh, battery, the output of a reaction produces hydrogen and oxygen, and it escapes from the battery. And so for the continuous reaction, we need to add water into the batteries. So in the lead acid batteries, uh, the failure modes are positive grid corrosion, Sediment or shedding buildup, top lead corrosion, plate sulfation, hard shots. This positive uh, grid uh, corrosion is the expected, more expected failure mode of lead acid batteries. The grids uh, which are lead alloys can get convert to lead oxide over time. And this uh, lead oxide, as it is a bigger crystal than the lead metal alloy, the plate grows and the growth rate will be uh, well characterized and is taken into account when the batteries are design, designed. Sediment uh, buildup or sediment buildup uh, failures occur as a function of amount of cycling a bat battery endures. These sediment buildup uh, failures are most more often in UPS batteries. Corrosion of the top lid uh, is basically it which is uh, present at the connection between the plates and the posts. And it is uh, very hard to detect even with visual inspection. So it uh, occurs near the, because it occurs near the top of the battery and is hidden by the cover. And this, uh, this failure, that this, the corrosion of top lid are uh, majorly occur due to high current drawn when the AC means drop off and it uh, results in heat buildup when discharging process. Plate sulfation, it is an uh, electrical path problem. A thorough visual inspection can sometimes find traces of plate sulfation. Failure mode for a lead acid VRLA battery. It is a second type of uh, lead acid battery as we, uh, uh, as we uh, discussed. In this, as and uh, on the process of a reaction, uh, hydrogen and oxygen is generated, and this uh, both regenerate to form water inside itself. So, in these batteries, there is no need for water to be added. The failure modes uh, which occur in lead acid VRLA batteries are a dry out, plate sulfation, soft and hard shots, post leakage, thermal runaway, positive good grid corrosion. The plate sulfation and the positive grid corrosion are same as we discussed in the earlier slide. 
dry out. Dry out is a, a phenomenon that occurs due to excessive heat. It may be uh, due to the lack of proper ventilation. As we told uh, in the battery rooms, uh, the ventilation should be proper. It should be air conditioned so that the temperature is maintained so that uh, batteries have a longer uh, life period. So dry out uh, failure occurs uh, due to excessive heat. To avoid this, a lack of pro uh, avoid this proper ventilation to be is to be provided, and the heat also can occur when overcharging, which can cause elevated internal temperatures, and also the if the surrounding temperature is uh, high, it can cause dry outs. Soft and hard shots occur for a number of reasons. Hard shots are uh, typically caused by taste lumps pushing to the mat and shorting off to the adjacent plate. And soft shots are caused by deep discharges. Thermal runaway occurs uh, when the battery's internal components melt down in a self-sustaining reaction. And the positive grid corrosion is uh, similar to the we discussed the, in the earlier slide. It is basically occurred because of the conversion of the lead oxides over a period of time. For next battery, that is a nickel cadmium battery, the failure mode. Modes are gradual loss of capacity, carbonation, floating effect, cycling and iron poisoning of positive plates. Gradual loss of capacity occurs from normally from aging process and it is an irreversible process. Carbonation on the other hand also occurs gradually but it is a reversible process. It occurs due to the absorption of carbon dioxide from the air into the electrolyte present and because of this reaction itself and the reaction of nothing but absorption this process is gradually occurs takes uh, some time to occur floating uh, failures are the gradual loss of capacity due to long period of floating without being recycled and uh, iron poisoning is caused by corroding plates uh, present in the batteries and it is an irreversible failure. So now we have seen the failure modes on uh, three different types of batteries. And uh, now what are the maintenance philosophies uh, which are uh, accepted in the industry? Some say that just replace the batteries when they fail or die. These people uh, which uh, follow this uh, type of maintenance, they do not do any maintenance or any testing. And as we discussed, these, uh, these batteries installed uh, in any of the organization are highly cost, high economic is being uh, spent on this, a uh, huge amount of money is spent on this. And if we are not doing then uh, minimum testing or maintenance, and if you are not replacing the uh, batteries uh, when they fail or uh, or basically we just keep on watching when they fail and just replace when they are uh, died it would uh, it is a risk for the system because at the time of need when the batteries are to be operated they may not operate properly or work as per the requirement so it is not uh, accepted Second, uh, the maintenance philosophy which is followed is replaced after a certain time. In this also, the people do not do maintenance or do a, a minimum type of maintenance. But practically, there are possibilities the batteries can fail earlier than which is expected or which is uh, given by the battery manufacturer time period or life period. Because of the different operating conditions, uh, there are possibilities the batteries can uh, die before their life period. So replacing after a certain time is also a risky job. So properly maintaining batteries is needed. And the third one, the maintenance philosophy is a serious maintenance and testing program, which should be done in order to ensure that batteries are in good condition and they have prolonged life period. And so that you have a optimal 
time for replacement. This maintenance program, that is a serious, serious maintenance and testing program, can include maintenance, can include inspection of the battery. There is a physical, visual inspection of the battery. If there are any corrosion or, or anything, we can visually inspect. Or we can do impedance measurement. And thirdly, uh, we can go for capacity testing, which we are discussing in today's webinar to track the battery's state of health. And if any degradation and, and faults are found, we can avoid the serious or surprise dangers which can occur. And we can reduce the maintenance cost as well as we can uh, reduce, uh, increase the life of the battery. And more importantly, the job of the battery can be done when it, it is needed. As discussed, the job of the battery is to give the backup to the critical systems. So a maintenance uh, program of inspection, impedance, and capacity testing is mandatory so that we can know we are uh, assured that the battery will operate at the required time uh, and it will fulfill the purpose of which it has been installed in the organization. What are the common practices or standards uh, which are for these inspections and the battery testing? There are three main uh, standards, IEEE 450, which is uh, for the flood, flooded lead acid. IEEE recommended the practice for maintenance, testing, and replacement of uh, VLRA uh, vented lead acid batteries for stationary applications, which describes that the frequency and the type of measurement that need to be taken to validate the condition or health of the battery. The IEEE 450 covers the inspections, capacity tests, corrective actions, and battery replacement criteria. In today's webinar, we will be only uh, discussing about the capacity test, which is uh, recommended by the IEEE 450. Second uh, standard is IEEE double one. Double eight for sealed lead acid battery. IEEE 1188 uh, recommends practice for maintenance, testing, and replacement of VRLA batteries for stationary applications, uh, which defines the recommended test and the frequency. We will be going through the capacity test recommendations uh, given by IEEE 1188 also. Third standard is IEEE 1106, uh, which is for uh, basically for nickel cadmium batteries. It recommends the practice for installation, maintenance, testing, and replacement of vented nickel cadmium batteries for stationary, stationary applications. In this also, we will be going to the capacity test recommendations given by the IEEE 1106 for the nickel cadmium batteries. What does IEEE 450 tell us about capacity test? IEEE 450 says that uh, recommends that the capacity test or the discharge test should be done at the installation for the as, or as an acceptance test. That means as at the time of installation, if your battery has a rating, for example, under AH, at the time of installation, we can uh, test that the if, whether the battery is capable of giving 10 amperes for say 10 amperes for 10 hours. If the battery is capable of giving 10 amperes for 10 hours, that means it is uh, it is fulfilling or it is meeting the technical specification of that battery of 100 ampere hour. IEEE 450 recommends that this discharge test or the capacity test, uh, we call the discharge test as, as capacity test also because uh, AH as the ratings we get on the batteries is the capacity of the battery and while testing it, we are just discharging the battery for doing the capacity testing, which are just discharging the battery. So the this test capacity test is also called a discharge test. So IEEE 450 recommends to do uh, this capacity test within first two years of service. And it also recommends to carry out this capacity test or discharge test periodically. And the inter, uh, intervals should not be greater than 25% of the expected service life. 
for example the expected service life is uh, 10 years so that uh, the testing interval should not be more than 2.5 years that means within 2.5 years of interval capacity test or discharge test should be carried out on the battery fourth recommendation is that uh, the capacity test should be done annually when the battery shows some kind of uh, degradation or if it has reached its 85% of the expected service life for example if you have a battery with service life uh, specified as 10 years then if it has uh, been used for more than 8.5 years we need to do that uh, battery uh, discharge testing annually or also if uh, the battery shows any signs of degradation which means when the battery capacity drops more than 10% from its capacity on the previous uh, testing you have done or if it is below 90% of the rating it, it has been mentioned for example for a 100 ah uh, battery if you have done a testing and if it is less than uh, 90 ah then you need to do the, the, the discharge testing annually and if the battery has reached 85% of the service years it uh, delivers and delivers 100% or more than the manufacturer rated capacity that means there are no signs of uh, degradation and you can do the testing once in 2 years that means if after uh, for example you have a battery of life period of uh, 10 years and you are testing uh, after 8.5 years you are doing a testing and it at that time period also it, if it is giving 100% capacity that means there is no need to do annually you can just do the capacity or discharge testing once in 2 years this was the recommendations given by IEEE 450 for flooded lead acid batteries now coming for IEEE 1188 for c Uh, when doing uh, the I, uh, discharge testing as per IEEE 1188, it recommends that the discharge test or the capacity test should be done at the time of installation as an acceptance test. Secondly, it should be done uh, periodically, and the interval should not be more than 25% of the expected service life. Uh, for example, as explained in the earlier uh, standard, also that means if you if the expected time uh, time period of the battery is 10 years. the battery testing should be done uh, within uh, within a time span of 2.5 years periodically and if there is a uh, while doing the battery impedance test if the impedance values are changing significantly 
between the readings and if you see an uh, physical changes has occurred then you need to do the discharge testing periodically and uh, thirdly it recommends that i triple e double one double eight recommends that it should you should do the capacity testing or the discharge testing annually when uh, there is a sign of degradation which is nothing but when the battery's uh, capacity drops more than uh, 10% of its capacity for example you have a 100 ah battery and if it uh, if its capacity drops less than 90 ah that means you need to do the bat uh, capacity testing annually and also if uh, if the battery capacity uh, if its expected time period service life as reach of 80% 85% of it that means for an uh, 10 years life period battery if you have crossed 8.5 years of service you need to do the battery testing annually this is uh, same as uh, you have seen in the earlier standard also but this standard is uh, basically for the sealed uh, lead acid batteries which are vrla batteries Next standard, the third standard, uh, IEEE 11106, uh, is for nickel cadmium batteries. For the capacity testing, it recommends that the discharge test should be done within first two years of service. And secondly, it recommends that at five-year intervals, the discharge testing should be done until the battery shows signs of excessive capacity loss or the uh, if there is a high degradation, then only we have to go for uh, go for uh, periodic testing. Otherwise, we can go for five-year intervals testing. And if there is a high uh, degradation, we need to go for discharge testing annually. So there were uh, three different standards we have gone through. That is one for the flooded lead acid battery, second for, for the sealed lead acid batteries, and third standard for the nickel cadmium batteries. So as a summary of this, uh, we, have, uh, we have given some steps to carry out the health checkup of battery. These are these uh, simple steps. One is make a capacity test when the battery is new as a part of the acceptance test. That means you do this discharge test when you are installing your battery as a new one. Secondly, you make an impedance test that is nothing but battery impedance test we can be carried out by a battery impedance testers for which uh, we will be having a webinar uh, on Uh, Matthew, you are not audible. And fourthly, uh, to make an impedance test every year on the flooded cells or quarterly on the sealed uh, cells. Fifth step is uh, make the capacity or discharge test at least for every 25% of expected service life. That is, uh, for a 10 year service life battery, you need to do after uh, for a uh, 2.5 years uh, intervals. And we should do the discharge test annually when the capacity of the battery has reached 85% of, uh, has, has been less than 90% of the capacity and if its uh, service life has reached 85%. And also if the impedance value has changed significantly, you need to carry out a capacity test. And always uh, follow the standards, IEEE standards which are given uh, for all the temperature, voltage, and gravity measurements, and always uh, maintain a report so that you can compare the readings uh, taken uh, periodically. But as we have in the first slide, as we discussed, these readings are temperature uh, are affected by the temperature, and so there is a need for temperature corrected uh, measurements to be done. And so Mega has come up with this new updation uh, for temperature correction which uh, the mega solution that is torquil can carry out as per the standards.
The mega solution for battery capacity testing is a uh, Torkel. As you see in the image, uh, this is the product. It has uh, it can be used uh, for test the batteries which are in services. It has a dynamic uh, discharge technology that is uh, it can the full power range is available at all the voltages. And as you see, uh, there are uh, the good uh, ventilation is provided for the airflow in the device, and it uh, it increases the safety of the product and the real time monitoring during the test that means if you are as we have discussed uh, if you have a 100 ah battery you will be doing the discharge for 10 hours so a real time monitoring uh, is essential for that uh, purpose and torkel has the capability to give you a real time monitoring during the test so that you are aware how much discharge has been occurred and how much is left Easy report function, uh, you can do the uh, reporting uh, very easily. You can uh, generate PDF files, uh, reports. Expandable for larger battery banks. Uh, as we know, the battery ratings uh, increase as per uh, different applications. So a single unit, that means a standard uh, unit, main unit can be toggle unit. And if you want to increase the loads, there are extra loads which can be attached to the main unit that is the TXL accessory which can be attached to the main unit so you need not go for another main unit if the current requirement is more that means you can use the single main unit and the needed extra loads can be attached to the main units and this uh, increases the uh, use a uh, easiness of use and lastly, we have a BBM, that is volt, a battery volt monitor, which is used to mo uh, monitor the each cells in the system. This is nothing but a, a power profile of a Torkel. As you see there, we have uh, three different models, uh, Torkel 910, Torkel 930, and Torkel uh, 950. The basic model is uh, Torkel 910. The 910 has the capability uh, up to 110 ampere, as you see the indication. For uh, 930 or 950, it can go up to 220 amperes. That means at this point, for example, the torque 950 can give uh, 220 ampere and also the voltage it gives is up to somewhat between 50 and 100 volts. The maximum power output of uh, Torkel is 15 kilowatt. And there are different modes available that is constant current mode, constant power mode, constant resistance mode, and uh, constant, we can get a profile of current and or pro power profile. Constant in current, constant current mode, uh, current mode, you can just uh, set the current which should be a discharge from the battery and at that particular uh, current rating uh, the torque will discharge your battery and in constant power mode the power will be constantly uh, discharged and in constant resistance mode the resistance is maintained uh, constant that means you can do different types of uh, testing using the single equipment the different accessories available as we discussed, this is, this is a BBM, that is battery voltage monitor, which can be used to monitor the voltage of each, uh, each cell in the battery system. And this is an extra load, which uh, we discussed, if we need to increase the load or the current rating, this uh, extra load TXL units can be attached to the main torque unit, so that you, the high current ratings can be obtained. <laughs> Lastly, coming to the uh, new updates uh, which are available for the Torkel. These updates are uh, freely available so that if any of you are, uh, of you are having a Torkel 900 series uh, with you, you can just uh, this update this. You can just contact us for the updates. What are the updates available? One is enhanced temperature correction and compensation. This uh, basically, for as we discussed, the capacity measurement readings are temperature dependent so if you're doing a, a temperature measurement at a different uh, at a different climate or temperature and you're comparing it with a temp, temp, uh, capacity measurement and at different temperature that means you cannot 
compare the results both because you have done the measurement at two different temperatures so for comparing the results you need to do the temperature uh, compensation or temperature correction so up till now there were no units uh, which have the temperature compensation facility so now the mega uh, torkel has come up with this uh, compensation facility we will be uh, in the next slide we will be uh, going through which are the temperature compensation facility available secondly improved functions uh, when using bbm that is uh, battery volt monitors which are used to uh, monitor the voltage of each cell in the system if you have a number of cells and if you are removing or any of the cell is disconnected this bbm as the capability has come up with a new improved capability of detecting that a cell is been removed from the system and also it can detect if there are longer interconnections between the sections in the battery system bbm uh, can uh, detect this and can give you a more uh, detailed or consistent presentation of cell numbering order so that uh, there will be no confusions in the cell numbering in the reports the new update has come up with a new improved drivers and processing which uh, results in faster transfer of uh, test files to the usb drive the test files which have been stored in the torkel can be uh, transferred to the usb and can be displayed using the software uh, which is freely available and also the uh, in the new update the storage uh, has been increased earlier it was 20 tests were uh, possible to store now we can store up to 30 tests and also the presentation of the test current and test power in the result has been uh, more uh, designed more properly you can so you can view it Uh, and do the reporting uh, more in a more easier way talking about the enhanced uh, temperature uh, compensation as we discussed uh, in the recommendations we had different triple standards co50 i triple double one double eight and i triple standards for different batteries for the temperature compensation also this ieee has uh, come up with some standards basically the capacity uh, battery's capacity is dependent on the temperature it is said that if the ambient temperature is high the capacity increase and it will shorten the battery life and when we talk in opposite way if the ambient temperature is low the capacity of the batteries uh, maintain so while doing doing a capacity test uh, we need to do uh, the temperature compensation so ieee 450 and ieee 1188 as two uh, methods to do this compensation one is if the tests are going to be done for more than 1 hour it has an equation and the temperature compensation is done to the capacity calculated after the completion of the test but if the testing is done for more than one uh, is done for less than one hour for that the uh, the compensation basically is different it is done made prior to the test so if your testing is for more, for a duration of more than one hour then the temperature compensation is done after the test but if your testing is uh, for going to be for a shorter period than one hour then the compensation will be done prior to the test and iec uh, 60896 recommends that the compensation is performed prior to the test and the measured capacity is we get uh, the value is a compensated value there are some equations for uh, all of three uh, standards uh if any one of you needed uh, we can uh, provide you the uh, technical guide for the calculation of the correction and basically only there are three uh, correction and the torkel does the uh, corrections automatically you do not worry about the equations or how the correction is done just you have to enter the temperature value and it will give you the corrected value so now you are uh, you are able to compare your measurements Done at two different time periods and at two different climates. Uh, thank you, everyone, for join uh, for attending this webinar. Now it's time for uh, 
uh, queries. If you any of you have any queries, you can just type in the chat window. Uh, some of you of the queries will be addressed right now. Okay, so that's the end of the presentation. Everyone, if you have any questions, please write it now in the chat box and we'll try it to answer for you. Uh, in the meantime, uh, can you hear me, Grace or Sumedhi? I think I'm losing my audio. If I can, I can read for for you, Michael. Okay, bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the first question is uh, what battery type is recommended for switch gears in electrical substation oh based on my experience sir, and based on what i can see in the uh, substations they they normally use the nickel cadmium why because nickel cadmium can stay longer uh, in a high temperature environment but of course if you are buying a sealed type or VRLA, this should be a, in a controlled environment or uh, a, a, ro a room that is being, uh, the temperature is being controlled. So they, they normally use the nickel cadmium because it can uh, stay, uh, it can stay longer in a uh, higher temperature and the longer life. And also, uh, but, but the uh, disadvantage of this one is it's, it's more expensive than the, the lead acid one. Yes, you are okay. correct, Michael. Yeah, actually there are three, three types. Commonly, there are three types of battery and normally on the substation. Platelet acid battery, a valve regulated acid, and the last one is, the expensive one is a cadmium, nickel cadmium type. So depend on the budget on to design the, the substation, I think. Yeah. Okay, the, the next question is, uh, at what, Ambient temperature should a battery operate normally. So maybe can I answer this, Michael? Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead, bro. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, most of the battery will affect the the temperature uh, condition. So mostly every manufacturer state the the temperature uh, ambient. So it's around twenty five up to twenty seven degrees Celsius. So when you use that the temperature, the the life lifetime of the battery will be maximum. Because if you have different condition, maybe uh, lower or freeze condition, you know the battery will be uh, the capacity of battery will be uh, reduced, but the lifetime will be increased. Then on the opposite side, if you operate the battery in the higher temperature, the capacity will be uh, low, getting low sorry the capacity will be getting high but the lifetime of the battery will be less so opposite the condition between the temperature capacity and the lifetime of the battery so you need to to refer on the battery specification uh, to see the temperature uh, ambient temperature for that battery maybe you have any comment uh, michael Yes, that, that's correct, bro. They, they must refer to the manufacturer's data because they normally indicate the uh, the temperature range operating yeah. base for the battery. OK, okay so the, another question. Can you read? Yep. No? How often should we test yeah. batteries in substations? So as mentioned in the uh, presentation, we have, uh, depends on the test, of course. But uh, in, in, uh, in this webinar, we focus on the capacity testing. And as suggested by the standard, it should be 25% uh, of the lifespan. Of course, on the first year or at the time you receive the, the battery, you need to do the capacity test for, uh, for verification if they supplied you a good quality one. And after uh, two years, maybe for a warranty purposes, before the warranty lapses, you can check it again. And as recommended by the standard, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's the time i triple e uh, 450 uh, you should test it every 25 percent of the expected lifespan so for example uh, it is uh, expected to, to to work for eight years then you need to test every two years that is the 25 percent of eight years and there are also yeah. standards that saying uh, every two years for the capacity testing and for the impedance testing, of course, you can uh, 
do it along with the uh, your maintenance schedule. So if you do it uh, every year, then you can do the, the battery impedance. But of course, again, uh, once you receive the battery, you must do impedance test. So to have a baseline, because the battery testing is also a relative testing wherein you compare the previous test to the new test or the current test which is done. Okay? Yeah. The next question. In a battery bank of 118 cells, with each cell having 100 upper R, can we replace one defective cell with zero voltage oh. with one that is 100 why with zero voltage uh, is it a battery <laughs> what is the effect if any also can we do the other way around that is 150 ampere r can replace with 100 ampere r so i don't think it has zero voltage sir so every battery has a voltage output so that he can he can push or it can push a current to, to, to supply to the load but uh, with this question, uh, I'm not sure yet if we replace a different capacity. But, you know, what I can recommend, if you will do that, you must check the floating current. Okay? So, of course, uh, the floating current, if it goes above or increased, if it will increase, then that means the one you replaced or the one that is new to the circuit, causes that floating current to increase. And we don't want to do that because uh, that means that battery becomes a load for the other battery. And when you have this increasing floating current, that will produce more heat. And so it will uh, uh, degrade your battery, the battery system. But I'm not sure yet if uh, it can be yeah. done if, if, if uh, different specification, it should not be zero voltage. Yeah, actually, it, it, as I know, it is not re really recommended. Yeah, correct. Because correct. as we know, the every battery has a different internal resistance, so it will affect to the discharge discharging process. Maybe it will uh, it may become yeah, the load. Of, yeah, the, yeah. Maybe one of them will be faster or lower. So we, as I know, it's not really recommended. Yeah. Yep. So to check the effect. You must check the float current, sir. Yeah. Another thing, what is the expected useful life of lead acid batteries and nickel cadmium? Uh, different manufacturer, different uh, specifications, sir. So you can refer to the manufacturer. Uh, yeah, I think in general, battery life of the lead acid around five to seven years, and correct. nickel cadmium around maybe maybe more than twenty years. But depend on the but temperature the condition and, and yeah, the temperature. Course. Correct. Yeah. But in general, Normally, the manufacturer will will specify the the expected life and the uh, the operating range. So meaning that expected life from the manufacturer is based on the temperature range that they provided. Uh, another the the last question here. For lithium ion, can test in similar manner as nickel cadmium? Yes, sir. All battery can be tested the same way. Uh, lithium ion and nickel cadmium. If you do the the battery impedance test, then you can do that also in the uh, in both lithium ion and nickel cadmium. But it's very rare to see the uh, lithium ion on the battery bank. Or, or in a substation, yeah, like because that. normally this is for portable one, portable unit, or military uh, application. But uh, yeah, some tests maybe can use the same manner, I think, eh? but not all, I believe, not all testing can be applicable for this type lion, the ion type battery. Yeah, I the think. lithium ion battery. Yeah. Okay, the next question. So... Uh, that's all the questions that we have for today so this concludes our webinar and at this point in time i would like to say thank you everyone for joining us and we hope to see you again in our next webinars we still have a lot so stay safe and have a good day thank you everyone
Thank you so much, Thank you, Grace. Thank you, everyone. Michael and Grace. Thank you, Michael. Bye. Thank you, Medi. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. 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 Bye.